Hello, I'm Joel Trumbo. I'll be your host for this video about pesticide safety. You know, I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing that you're watching this video because you handle pesticides where you work. And your boss is required to provide you with annual safety training. Or maybe you're a certified applicator, and that means you need continuing education units every two years to renew your certificate or license. Well, if you're either one of those, you're in good shape because this video will satisfy both of those. Or perhaps you're watching this video because you're like me, and you find pesticides and pest management to be an incredibly fascinating and, and dynamic topic. Now, if you don't believe me on this, check this out. Mankind has been trying to control pests forever. I mean, just think of when we planted our first crops thousands of years ago, and the first aphids that got on those crops. We needed to do something about that. Or think of the first caveman and how he finally was tired of cockroaches in the cave with him. So we've been dealing with pests forever. But the modern era of pesticides, the time when we use the synthetic man-made pesticides, that's been less than 100 years. And so much has happened during that time. For example, we had the honeymoon phase where we created these new chemistries and we found that they were incredible for making our farms more productive, making our homes more comfortable, making our landscapes more beautiful. But we love these chemicals so much that we didn't pay attention to the risks, the downsides that they posed. Well, flash forward a couple of decades later, and we're dealing with those risks. We still have pests to deal with. And we're going to be using pesticides for the foreseeable future to deal with those pests. But the secret is, the key is, that we need to use those pesticides in a way that is safer for people and the environment. So right there, that's the foundation of what we're talking about in this video. So stay awake, stay tuned, it's going to be good. I think it's important that we go over the class goals. First off, this video will provide the annual pesticide safety training required for employees by the California Department of Pesticide Regulation. So for the rest of this video, I'm not going to say California Department of Pesticide Regulation. I'm going to say DPR. I'm going to use that abbreviation. So this, this video, it's going to satisfy that annual safety training requirement for employees. Additionally, it'll provide continuing education hours if you're a certified applicator. If you've taken your QAC or QAL or PCA test, this video will provide you continuing education hours. We also want to increase your understanding of how pesticide risk to people and the environment is assessed and mitigated. Now, that was a lot of words. Let me say it in a simpler way. Uh, we want to show for you how we find out how dangerous pesticides are and what we're going to do about those dangers and lessen them. We want to provide you basic information on important topics like how pesticides are regulated by the government, important environmental issues, and integrated pest management. Finally, at the end of the video, we want to provide basic information about the major pesticide groups that are used today. Here are some of the topics we want to cover. What are pesticides? Now, my guess is that everybody has kind of a working definition of what a pesticide is, but you may not be really aware of the legal definition, how pesticides are regulated by the government, pesticide safety training requirements, pesticide risk, Pesticides and the environment. Handling pesticides safely, you know, what methods, what strategies do we use to handle compounds that, that may be dangerous, but handle them in a safe manner. And integrated pest management. Let's start off with the definition of the word pesticide. Now, if you look at the word literally, the word literally means kills pests. The end of the word side, that means to kill, like homicide or suicide or genocide. So literally, the word means kills pests. But the government definition, the, the legal definition, is slightly different. It's slightly broader than that. So according to the government, both the federal government and the state government here in California, a pesticide is any kind of compound, any kind of chemical compound, whether it's natural or synthetic or man-made, that controls pests. You'll notice that I didn't say the word kills pests, like the literal definition. This is an important principle. The pesticide doesn't have to kill the pest to control it. 
Additionally, any chemical that defoliates plants. Now, the word defoliate means to take the leaves off a plant. So, for example, the most common example, the most common example is cotton production. Commercial cotton production in California, we use defoliants to remove the leaves from the plants before we harvest the, harvest the crop. The second example is defoliation. Any chemical that's used to defoliate or take the leaves off a plant is considered a pesticide. The most common example of this is cotton production. In California, cotton is a very significant crop, and cotton is harvested mechanically. But before they harvest that cotton, they defoliate the plants to make harvest easier. Now, you'll notice with this example and the one I'm going to talk about next, there actually isn't a pest involved. In the example of cotton, all we want to do is harvest that cotton. There's no insect we want to kill. There's no weed we want to kill. We just want to make harvest easier. So literally, it's not a pesticide. We're not killing a pest. But legally and technically, defoliants fall into that definition. The same thing goes with plant growth regulators. Any chemical that's used to regulate plant growth is also considered by the government to be a pesticide. Let me give you a very common example. Golf courses. Golf courses, a lot of the time, their management staff spends time mowing the turf, right? But if you use a plant growth regulator product on that turf grass, you can extend the time between mowings. So any chemical that we apply to a plant to change the way it grows, a plant growth regulator, that's also considered a pesticide. Now let's be very clear here, we're not talking about fertilizers. If you put a fertilizer on a plant, it changes the way it grows. It makes it grow bigger, right? But it's not, we're not talking about nutrition here. We're talking about changing the way the plant grows by influencing something that's happening at the hormonal level. And finally, in California, any adjuvant chemical is also considered to be a pesticide. Now, an adjuvant, that might be a new word for you. Here's an easy way to remember it. You add the adjuvant to the spray tank to help the pesticide work better. So any secondary product you add to the tank along with the pesticide, maybe it, it helps uh, the pesticide stick onto the leaves, or maybe it keeps the pesticide from drifting in the air. Any of those additional chemicals that you add to the tank, those are adjuvants in California, they're considered to be pesticides too. So there it is. There's our definition of the term pesticide. It's important to know that all the sides are pesticides. Sometimes there's some confusion about this. So the insecticides, the herbicides, the fungicides, any of the sides are pesticides. I'm not going to go through the whole list, but you're going to see that to be true. Additionally, there's some other things that are pesticides that we don't commonly think of as pesticides, but they fall under the legal definition. Any kind of disinfectant, like a toilet bowl cleaner or swimming pool chemicals, all of these are legally and technically pesticides. They control pests, and the government says that they're pesticides in every way, just like uh, insect sprays are. Next, we want to talk about regulating pesticides. So if you're breathing and you're paying attention, you know that we live in a society that has a lot of rules. We have a lot of laws and regulations. And pesticides are no different than any other topics like driving or education or, or health. Pesticides are fairly heavily regulated, both by the federal government and the state government and local governments as well. So let's. Uh, Let's see who the key players are. At the national, at the federal level, it's the US Environmental Protection Agency, the US EPA. Everything that has to do with pesticides at the federal level is regulated by the US EPA. At the state level, here in California, it's the California Department of Pesticide Regulations, DPR. Then at the local level, you have the County Agricultural Commissioner's Office. Oftentimes, people refer to the county agricultural commissioner's office as the county ag department. So the, the county, they're the local enforcement agency. Now, it's important to remember that the counties, they don't have their own regulations. They're actually enforcing DPR's regulations at the local level. Now, the US EPA gives states the authority to regulate pesticides. And there's actually a pesticide approval process. It's called registration. Additionally, the federal government allows states to regulate pesticides or enforce pesticide uses. Now, here's the most important part of all of this. States can be stricter than the federal government. They cannot be more lenient. So here, here in California, DPR has to be at least as strict as the U US EPA, but they can be stricter. 
And you're going to see in many cases DPR is stricter than the US EPA. Here's some important principles. In California, a pesticide cannot be used until it first gets DPR approval. But you can't get DPR approval until the pesticide has been registered by the federal government first. So it always comes in that order. Federal registration first, followed by state registration. The employer has to have a written training program. That means they have to have a description of what their training program is like, what tools they use, what videos, what books, what topics they cover, what pesticides are included in their training. And the employer must keep training records for two years. Now, there's a lot of different topics that are required for training, things like hazards, the safety gear and procedures, heat-related illness. We're going to spend a little time talking about heat-related illness. That may come as a surprise to you, but there's actually a very logical link between pesticides and heat-related illness. Poisoning symptoms are the pesticides that you handle. Now, one of the points I'm going to make over and over again in this, in this course is that there are a lot of different pesticides, and they're all many of them are very different from one another. And so if you have an exposure to one chemical, the symptoms of exposure may be different than the exposure symptoms from some other chemical. What to do in case of pesticide emergencies? Medical supervision, you're going to see that means blood testing. Now, don't get worried. Most people don't have to get blood tests for pesticide use. It's actually fairly rare. We'll cover that in a bit in detail. Hazard communication, in other words, communicating hazard information to your employees or, or worker right to know and any other applicable laws and regulations. So that's it. If you're handling pesticides at your workplace, your employer has to provide information on these topics. And guess what? This video, we're going to cover all of those. It's important that we start off with a foundational understanding of the importance of a pesticide label. Now, let me make a comparison. Pesticide labels and the labels on microwave popcorn. Both labels, right? Both give directions on how to use the product. Here's the essential difference. If you read the popcorn label, it says pop for four minutes this side down, right? But if you decide to pop for two minutes this side up, no one will arrest you. You haven't broken any laws. Those are just directions. They help you use the product. Pesticide label is different. If the pesticide label says you can use this on corn, but you can't use it on wheat, and you can only, only use four gallons an acre, if you use five gallons an acre and you use it on wheat, you've broken federal and state laws. So the label is more than directions. It's the legal parameters under which the applicator has to abide. The thing you want to avoid is something called use in conflict with labeling. So use in conflict with labeling, it's probably the most often cited violation in California for pesticide applicators. Got to make sure to stay within the parameters of that label. It's quiz time. So we're going to have a little quiz on this introductory chapter. Good luck.